Greetings to all in the matchless name of our Lord and Jesus Christ. I don't want to be called a pulpit preacher. That's why <laughs> I asked Pastor Roshan whether I can stay down. Anyway, let the Holy Spirit talk to us this morning, I believe. You are all glad in the presence of the Lord. First of all, I want to thank you, Pastor Roshan Jacob. And my cousin sister, first time I am talking to her in my life yesterday, <laughs> to be frank with you. Uh, I know her dad and mom before. And uh, anyway, I called uh, my niece's dad, George Utichain, last week and asked her, where your daughter in charge? <laughs> I know she's here in charge of the base somewhere. When I talked to him, he told me, your cousin is here, Annie is here. You talk to Pastor Samachin and, and, and the Pastor Roshan is ministering here and get in touch with them. That's the way I just connected with uh, Sister Annie, my cousin, yesterday. And they invited me for to minister the very word of God this morning. And uh, thank God and Pastor and the church for allowing me to preach from the very word of God this morning. And uh, let it be, let us be in the presence of God with a prayerful attitude. Sunday school or anything going on? Yes? Okay. Thanks for the nice introduction. You told about me as well, uh, Pastor Roshan. Um, I'm on my way to uh, North India on the way. I just stopped here. Uh, so I'd like to have some kind of great hallelujah energy and anointing before I go and preach uh, the word of God to tall North Indian states. And at last I will uh, finish it up, my ministry from Trivandrum, and then I'm going back to New York. As Pastor said, I'm living with my by uh, Sally and I have three boys, Daniel, David, and Isaac. Um, two of them graduated from All Roberts University, uh, Oklahoma. Maybe you heard about it. And thank God my parents were very well devoted to the Almighty God. And from the younger age, God has given me to learn the Word of God from Sunday school. And we have a youth wing we call YP. So whatever I learned in Sunday school, we got a platform to share what we learn and perform in stage even at an younger age. So we are so lucky, even though I was born and brought up in a small village, still that village have no hospital, but around 400 believers in that village. So. <clears throat> Such a kind of village where we lived. But God, I never dreamed about U.S. or become a pastor in my life. But I don't know why God me, called me for the last minute, but God has a divine plan. And, and thank God for God's uh, direct intervention for me in sending me to full-time ministry in the last time. My parents, we had actually six children. One was born before to me. Her name was Lovely. So we had three daughters and we had three boys. So she was uh, gone just three months of her age. So I never even saw her. I, will, I could see her up in, in the heavens when I reached there. That's what. So right after um, the death of my elder sister, my mom uh, went for a church meeting and devoted me, the first one who is com coming out of my womb will be dedicated to the Lord. Uh, to be frank with you, I was, until the age of 55, I didn't go for full-time ministry. But uh, I learned from Sunday school, YP, and but 16 years of age, I dedicated myself for ministry. I, was, I went to New York in 1990, 26 years old. But in 1996 onwards, I'm a full-time uh, Church of God ordained minister from there. Works in different capacities like interim pastor, uh, associate pastor, youth and senior school director. Teaching is my main hobby, I can say. The ministry I love to. 
So uh, most of the time I gave my messages as teachings, but you can learn how the Holy Spirit will lead you today. Uh, but I want to share, I know you got a lot of messages from nowadays, from YouTube, WhatsApp, and so many things, but I, I like to share wherever I go. Uh, most of my testimonies as well, and some of my ministry I do. I don't know, I will get, I'll be here until next Sunday. Uh, but let me see whatever I can uh, finish it up. Whatever the Holy Spirit talks to me, let it be a great blessing to you this morning. Everybody, I think, are doing good in the presence of God. Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The topic I just want to share with you is a simple topic. But I want to know... Uh, how you are. Are you a lost seed? Are you a living seed? Are you a dried seed or a crushed seed? I don't know how your status is today, this morning. But you come under, we are all coming in one of this group. Let's turn our attention to Matthew chapter 13, verse 3 to 8. Jesus taught his disciples so many stories, and he conducted so many miracles to believe that he is the Son of God. And he proved so many occasions that time, but along with that, he shared sometimes parables to his uh, dear disciples and showed them the power of Jesus Christ, the theology, whatever Jesus had with him, he shared the mysteries of the kingdom of God. That's what Jesus says in the same chapter. So let's come to that part. Then I'm going to read it. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed as he was scattering the seeds. Some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on the rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because of the soil was solo. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop. A hundred, sixty, thirty times that was sown. Gracious Heavenly Father, we are coming into your presence. Bless us with thy word. Help me to share the very word of God as the way the Holy Spirit leads us. We give you all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Everybody knows this uh, parable. One I am a Sunday school student, so I read this part. What we can learn out of it, what we are, let's think about it so it will be uh, very beneficial to you, I believe. The Jesus listens, uh, specifically says here, we see four places the seed was sown. The first part, first place it was sown was wayside. Are you all with me? Everybody? Okay. Today also, same thing I am talking. 50% of the people, they hear the very word of God. When they come out of this hall, they will forget what we preach, whether me, pastor, or somebody else. They don't write it down, they don't take notes, they don't put something on your head. It is gone. The, Jesus also says right here, somebody take the, this very word out of them. Satan, the birds. 50% I could say, they don't have time to recollect or refresh what they learned, what they were taught in the church. Such a kind of pressure, tensions, something building up outside of us. 
But we have to know and act in these last days so that we may keep the very word of God so precious in our heart as well as in our brain. Praise God. I'm asking you sometimes questions to bear with me. How many chapters in the Bible you know by heart? Hello? I don't want to hear silence. Uncle? Chapters or verses? I think they may know it more than because they are young. They have plenty of time. How many? Come on, give me a clue. In our songs, there are a lot of good. I know I, I was listened and inspired by the very songs of worship. What is the really the very word of God? That you have to know. John chapter 1 verse 1, it says, In the beginning was word, the word was with God, and the word was God. So if you will honor the very word of God, God will honor you. That's what I learned from my life. I was not born to become a pastor, missionary, evangelist, or anything. I'm just an associate pastor in my church right now in New York. But more than my church, I want to be with Indian people. You don't believe where the place I select for my full-time ministry. So my mom, as I told you the story before, dedicated me for the ministry when I was in her, but it takes 55 years for me to come out for full-time ministry. When my mom died, my wife gave me a note, you can go for full-time ministry now. You may ask me the question. You can ask me any question, no problem, okay? I'm a very open person. Why so late? What you can do at the age of 55, now I am 60. What you can do at 60? Anybody in the age group 60 over here or above? Come on. Hold it. Hath to Davo, Nan Hindi Lavulan Jodik in the North Indian Lilaka Ministry. Raise up your hands, please. If you are above 60, not even one person. Andy Matan, there's one person. Okay, very good. Well, up to the age of 20, come on. I really, nobody? 20 to 40? 20 to 40, come on. Praise the Lord. Say, praise the Lord at least. Hallelujah. 40 to 60? Wow, that's the be great group over here. Wow. <laughs> Well, only me and that Andy is above 60. You may think what we can do, right? But I will tell you what we can do, okay? You know Ben Johnson and Carl Lewis? You know it, okay. And you know the race in Olympics, like uh, Olympics and National Games, Asian Games, Commonwealth, there is a games by name, Relay Race. Have you heard about it? Hello, have you saw it? Have you run it? Yes, yeah, somebody knows it at least. In the fourth lab, they put a person, huh? the, the lean person, strong person, come on. Huh? Amen. The person with the strong muscles, bones, with the speed they can run, they will put them in the last lab with that leg, right? Why? They have to win, right? I always a coach will put them in the last lab, a good coach. Because the first three leg, uh, you know, the three lab, even though the runners are very weak, the fourth lab person can beat them up, everybody, 
So they put that man in the last lap, the strong person. So I am telling you, Andy, we are one of the strongest people in the fourth lap. I have reason for that. What time Jesus started his ministry? 30. Why not he started at 12? He started teaching at the Bible at the Jerusalem temple at 12. Yeah, we, we, we read it, right? He, teach, he was giving classes to the scribes and the uh, leaders at that time, right? But he went out doing the ministry at the age of 30. So I think time doesn't matter. Hello? But there is a time for us. So the only short time we have it, we know it. But that time is precious. And God is counting only the time that you are running. That's all. Whether you run 30 years, 40 years, 5 years, 10 years, doesn't matter. The last lap, the leg that you are running, I mean, you have a goal in front. And with that great dynamic power, I am running in the last lap. Hello? And I have only one mission in my mind to win the race. That's all. That's what we are doing. Okay? So everybody with me? So I love to be in India rather than any places in the world. After Corona, just before that Corona, I planned to go to Jerusalem and the Corona came down. That also was gone. Now I made a trip to Mumbai first. Then I, uh, Gujarat uh, state, I actually went within a week. Then I come to, from Ahmedabad to Dubai yesterday. I love the state of India more than any other state because India is one of the state, my home's mother state, where so many people has to be come out of this slavery, the sin. And 1.2 billion people are there. But God is doing a great last minute ministry through the great servants of God, even through the local people, just for your information. Maybe you may think that India is still under some kind of political Hindu power or something is over there. Don't worry about it. Even though Modi is uh, I mean, ruling over there, even in Gujarat, there are 10 percent Christians. Not out not unofficial. <laughs> they may put 3% or 2%. I visited Gujarat second time. Interiorly, there are churches that goes up to thousands. More than Malayali churches, I want to let you know. So God is making every move in every state. Nobody can power, I mean, limit the power of God's spirit and the church of God. Orissa, let me tell you why I pick Orissa. You know, both uh, Graham Steins and those two children were martyred. And I don't get any calling to go to UK, Canada, or stay in the beautiful city of New York where we live. Uh, when these great saints of God were murdered, thereafter, in 2007 and 8 end, the greatest persecution in India happened in a a small tribal district by name Kandamal, Orissa, happened right there in 2007, December. One of their great Hindu Sami by name Lashmanana Sami, he was murdered by the next slave group. And these uh, people accused it was Christians that killed this Hindu Sami. That whole story is book, written in this book by one of my great friends, by Babu Joseph. And we are trying to translate it into Malayalam, sorry, into English and in Hindi and in Orissa. Okay? So I will say a little bit of my testimony as well, but like, I'll go along with it. So one of their missionaries by name, uh, uh, Pastor R.K. Digal, he came 2010 to one of our church conferences in Atlanta. He told me this story 
what happened in Orissa. Around 30 pastors were brutally killed. 160 people were uh, beheaded or brutally killed by this extremist group that time. I'm not scared about these things. Don't get, you get scared neither, okay? God is with us. Don't, don't worry about it. Even last week, August 23rd, this group uh, assembled and uh, along with uh, the help of the present C, uh, C, uh, CM of Orisa, they planned a big convention of three to four lakhs people. We pray to God. Some of the Christians, even in that uh, tribal district of Kandamal, they scared, they locked their rooms and they went out to cities like, anybody heard the, uh, know the uh, state of Orissa? Hello, anybody, uh, you are all Indians? I hope, okay. They locked out their rooms, around 40% of the people even left it, they are scared, you know, we cannot blame everybody for it. They locked their rooms and went out. We prayed to God, thank God, that convention was cancelled. They tried to attack the Christians again over there, but it was cancelled. So let me tell you, God is still in control. Even though persecutions or anything happened over there, God will help out his people. So around 500 churches were destroyed, 600 villages were destroyed. The poor people, they live with the goats and chicken. You can believe. So you think about the past is how they live it. So, so many pastors from that poor district of Kandamal, they, you know, in order to teach their stu uh, student, uh, kids, they moved to Barambur, Bhubaneswar, you know, cities near to them. Anyway, we are making a big call and big move for Kandamal, and people are coming back to Kandamal, but still they are under some pressure and fear these children of God are there. So please pray for the state of Kandamal when you get a ch um, the, this district of Kandamal and Orissa when you get a chance. And even my wife is joining with me from 20th to two weeks of until 20th of uh, this September to October 6th in Orissa we are going. And my son Daniel Benjamin, he's also eldest son, he's also joining with me from Mumbai. Um, mm. Mumbai, Hyderabad, uh, Raipur, Bilai, Durg, then Orissa, the place where I'm working for five years, and uh, my hospital, everything. The only place these people touched was there was a hospital by name MMC Hospital. Morshed Memorial Children Hospital. It was founded by the British Baptist missionaries around 83 years ago. But in 1992, these missionaries left that area. They were also scared of it. So for around 8 to 10 years, this hospital were shut down. Even CNI people, they take in charge. They also abandoned that place. But in 2002, this pastor, R.K. Degal, whom I just referred to you, he's the founder of the hospital now. He came and uh, shared this testimony with me and in our conference. I told that pastor, please come to New York when you finish your ministry, wherever. So he came over there a couple of times. But when at last he came around in 2020, he shared me, Benjamin Pastor, it is time for you to come. My mom was died, as I told you. Uh, and her only prayer was, always whenever I call her to New, uh, from New York to India, this is the question he, uh, she asked me, when are you going for a full-time ministry? Every Tuesday, my mom was on full fasting for me until I go for the ministry. Even though my mom passed away, her prayers. Amen. So wait for God's time. Maybe you may be praying for subjects like five years, 10 years, 55 years I waited. If God has a time, it will come out true in his time. Wait for it. Praise God. So God can work out so many things in our life. So please uphold me in your prayers to do the ministry as the way God wants. So the only place they didn't touch was this MMC hospital because they put the CRP uh, police, Central Reserve Police, 
in that great facility of 11 acre property and some of the widows and the ladies nearby Christian people are so saved because of God's grace. All other places were attacked, was so violent and uh, people were really scared. But God is on our side. We started uh, around uh, uh, three years ago with the 20 unit hospital. We have a doctor, an Ayurvedic doctor. We started physio, lab, diagnostic center on the process of building up. It's an 11 acre property. God is moving on. One Christian MLA in the whole state. He attended our meeting just two years ago. He helped us in building up our wall. And I raised at around 35 lakhs for this missionary when he come over to there. I'm working as the international ambassador to this MMC hospital at this time. And uh, our CEO or, or this pastor Digal may come next year to US there we may go and help out and find out sources for this ministry so that we, we can finish up this work. Uh, that's what we are planning. So along with this, I am doing an evangelistic ministry too. Uh, so I don't want to be stay in the comfortable level as a bishop or a great position. I don't want to hold anything like that. If I want to get a position, I want to get it only over there. So that's the only my motto. <laughs> so I am, um, I'm, I just want to be a fast runner in the last time for the glory of God. Everybody with me? Yeah. Amen. I just shared about the, my testimony a little bit, right? Who is our seed? I, to, I, saw, I told you all, already about it. Who is our seed? Come on. Anybody know? Anybody farmers here? Have you done farming at any time? You know what a farmer will do? Why nobody is talking? Hmm? Among the harvest, if you don't know, just listen to me. I will explain a little bit. Maybe you are a, a younger generation. Maybe you don't know much about it. Along, if you are getting 100 fold of great seed, you know, 100 bush barrels of great seed, you don't take all the seeds for uh, sowing as seed to plant it. No. Very few selected productive seed. I will say, okay? A seed that can sustain, tolerate any kind of pressure. Hallelujah. Any kind of uh, external influence. Okay? That kind of seed will be taken out by our precious farmers or our parents. They will keep this seed. Not as the regular rice you get it. I know only rice, okay, because I am from the south. So, the seed that we are taken, uh, the rice that we are taken for seed, we will give them extra heat. They will put it in Malayalati Parayana, the Pinne, Vailat, Nalabole, and Wonak, and Nalabole. So, matter, any kind of pressure, heat, doesn't affect it. Amen? So that kind of seed, we will preserve it for a while. And when at the time of planting, we will take the seed out of it. The first thing they will do is, they will take the seed and put it in water. Okay? They will put it in water. So upon some time, we grew up in uh, small plants like... Uh, uh, you know, the, what do you call that? Uh, tomatoes and uh, beans. Beans, you know it, right? Uh, what was part of the English? Snake guard. You know that? Snake. <laughs> yeah. You know part of the too, right? Okay. We, we grow up all those over there. We have good weather over there. Uh, only three, four months, that's all. But some uh, Houston and Dallas, they got good weather. They can grow up, up to six to eight months, no problem there. So New York, we may get maybe three or four months, that's all. Anyway, 
uh, these seeds, okay, after a, a particular day, so the parents put them in water, so then the next day, after the next day, they take it out of water, then they apply some kind of pressure onto that seed, okay? What they do? Pressure. Everybody with me, okay? So upon doing that pressure, this get more regeneration. So much of potential it is getting. Amen? And after the second or third day, most of them come out on the third day itself, they start, come on, pull out. Hallelujah. On the third day, most of them, okay, will come out. That kind of power, we need it. So if you can go all this kind of process, that seed, I can say, it will be a productive seed. Hallelujah. Now I am giving you some more clue. I don't know which part you will end up, but you figure it out. I will say 50% of the uh, seed that we are sown, it is going be taken by the devil. I don't I'm just giving you an average. I don't see, I am not saying that you are all like that, okay? The Pentecostal community, the people, that's what I am talking as generally, okay? They hear it, they will say, hey, that message was good. A pastor came and gave a good message from New York. He said so many stories. I was really inspired. They say all those things, and out of it, the pastor or somebody asked them, what was the message you heard last week? I don't know. We will say in Malayalam, they hear through one ear and they take it out this way. Don't be like that, okay? So Satan had a great influence. No matter where they sit down, that message is gone. That's birds. Second part, where? Come on, that seed. Everybody knows that age. Come on. Where? In a rocky place. Everybody with me? Wow, it sprang up. Very fast. It's in a rocky place it is landed. But it gets withered. It, it, does, it is hard for it to find out place to ro get rooted. Let me tell you, if you want to grow high and high and high, you have to grow deeper, deeper, deeper. Hello? Am I right? A simple philosophy, everybody knows it, right? <laughs> Those 25 person, let me tell you, they will all say, hey, that presentation was good, that was good. The pastor said, we write it down. We write it out in, in our diary and everything. But after a while, they, don't, they cannot even find the diary, the notebook even. OK? Okay, so 50 plus 75 is over. Everybody with me? Okay. Now we have 25%. And I will say 24% of the rest are where? Huh? In the thorn. That means they are really crushed. I will say crushed. Hello? They are really crushed. Pastor, you can say anything you want. You have three boys. They are well off. You are well off. No problem with you. But we are crushed. We have our own problems. We cannot even tolerate. You don't know what we are going through. We are crushed. We are dried up. We taught our lessons, all those things. We heard all the sermons. That's all happened to this seed in the bushes, in the thorns. Take it out all, with all thorns, all kind of tension, pressure, tension. Word is gone. Where is the word placed in your heart today, this morning? 
if I'll get a chance another time in the future, if God send me over here, I can tell you the influence of word in my life. My grandpa one time, grandma passed away, grandpa came and stayed with me for one week. He challenged me with one thing, can you learn Psalms 119 by heart? I told him, any kind of challenge I will take it. Anybody, everybody knows 119, right? Nobody but answered to me. Anybody answer? I asked you so many times. Which chapter in the Bible you know? Psalm 23? How many chapters then? You know? 2300? Which are the other chapters? 91. Oh, two. 120? Okay. Anybody learn Psalms 119? Matthew 5, 6, and 7? Hello? Raise your hands if you are. Come on, why are you shy? So this grandpa challenged me. I said, I will. I take only one week when I was 12 years old to learn this. And I got 100 rupees that time. Now it is one crore rupees for me, that 100 rupees. You don't know what, what is one crore? One crore. I don't know how to convert into dharams or anything. So the word of our God has great impact in our life. So let me tell you, so 99 is gone, right? 50 on the west side, 25 on the rock, 24 on the thorns. One person. That's all on the right place. That's all on the right place. Everybody say, that's all on the right place. That's all the productive seed going to be. If you are a farmer, when you go and, uh, you know, uh, plow, I mean, the seed, how much investment you want to get out of it? 30, 50, 75, 90, how much you want? 100. 100 plus? Oh, man. Nobody wants lesser than that, right? that only one person is producing hundredfold. If you don't know it until now, just let you know, only one person in this, I mean, in, the, in this time is bringing up hundredfold result. Are you in that one person group? That's my next question. And that one person, let me tell about the mystery behind it. They are the only seed born to die. They are the only person born to die for Christ. The first born was Christ. He come out after the third day. Martyrs are the seed of the church. Same state of Orissa Kandamal. You come over there with me. 40% Christians now. Nobody can destroy the power of God. The establishment of God with any kind of persecution. I can challenge anybody. Nobody can stop the power of God. The word of God and its impact. Because this God belongs to God too. That's what I believe. So, are you a lost seed? Come on. Are you a dried seed? Are you a crushed seed? Are you a productive seed or a living seed? Holy Spirit is talking to you. Come out of that closet right now. How much resource you want to bring it out for Christ? A great challenge. A great question. It's all up to you. You know wherever you are. I don't have to expose it. Holy Spirit knows where you are. But when the Holy Spirit talks to you, surrender your lives for to the Lord. I have three boys. These three, I give it to the Lord. How many of them give it to the Lord? You, how many children you have? I'm not asking too many questions. Five? Did you give at least one to the Lord? I'm asking you one more question. 
I'm giving you an example. You have a son who is a doctor. You, are, you have a daughter who is an engineer or an astronaut. You have a boy who just passed the 10th grade or he finished or failed in the 10th grade. How many children you have? Three. Doctor, engineer, just failed in the 10th grade. Which one you give it to the Lord? Out of this. Come on. This guy is good for nothing. Let, let, let me give this guy to God. The tenth the fail. Well, you may go and see your pastor, Roshan Jacob, tomorrow with a hundred dollars. Maybe in my own time I'm talking. The city mayor of, I don't know, the Dubai, who is it? Okay, Sheikh or who it is? But if you go going to see the great shake of our, who is the, what, I don't know his name, okay? How you will go and approach him? If you are getting an offer to visit his palace, how? Huh? You will give the best. That's the right thing, right? That is, the, uh, that is what I do. Or I will give the shake Something really remarkable that he never forget me in my life. Am I correct? The very best that you can offer in your life, you will give it to the sheikh, right? So the sheikh will be impressed upon your gift. Am I correct? So, if you are offering something to God, a 10 plus great guy, doctor, engineer, figure it out. My mom's four children, they are doing ministry. You know, maybe Sajini, right? Samachin. But my younger brother, he's a pastor. He was in Bangalore. He just moved to Walagam. Other brother, he was uh, uh, he graduated from uh, uh, Anandalore Bible College, and he's in Dallas. And I, I am the eldest one. A mom's four children in ministry. Come on. Tears is the reason for it. My mom, and my time is up. I think I'm going to be, how many more minutes I have? Three? I don't know what time we close. Okay. My mom teach me one thing while I was a kid. Psalm 126 verse 5. Hurry up, please. Can you please take and read? Psalm 126. Those who sow in tears will reap with joy. I know that word by the heart, okay? I asked you that question before, right? If you want to come out with a great harvest, this is the only thing. Some farmers, when they go for sowing the seed, they were really heartbroken, broken, weeping. No joy, okay? I'm telling you the truth. Out of what they have it, they are roping. I mean, they are sowing. With the great heartbroken, weeping. That's the way they are. When people fail in the school, how the children's face look like. That's the way these poor, desperate farmers are sowing with the tears. Read the next word. How they are coming out, coming back. They are more, huh? I Amen. They come with the dancing. So one, weeds are going, sheaves are coming. There is a word sheaves on it. Have you seen that? A weed has gone and sheaves are coming. Sheaves, you know, the great group of weed that you get it out of it, okay? They went mourning, but they are dancing now. Hello? They are the one reaping hundred force. So if you will sow in tears for your children, I mean, you can reap with joy. My eldest son, let me tell you, I believe all our children are our seed. When he went to 
or Roberts University, that is three hours far away from me. When he graduated from high school, the first thing he come and asked me, Dad, I wa we want to go to, a, I want to go to a Christian university. We sent him over there. We were making around $60,000 at that time, to be frank with you, me and my wife. And this could, cost was $40,000 per year. So he, we couldn't find any Christian university near to, with this match. One was in Lee College, that was in Tennessee. There was only chemical engineering over there. So he loves mechanical engineering, and he wanted to take theology as well. So out of our two-thirds of our income, we invest in this child, OK? To be frank with you. And he studied over there. He is pioneering a church right now. All his loans are gone. He married a Kerala girl. He came over to, you know, American girls, 99% of them, they don't come to, uh, even though India and marry him, around 90, 95%. But he was very dedicated, committed. He talks to my mom. Every, my mom was a prophet. I didn't say much about her. Amachi, how is everything going on? So even the proposals came. This thing he will say, let me pray about it. And he pray for it. And he, she, he find out that such a good girl, she's a pharmacist. Uh, I mean, uh, in India, she was pharmacist. Now she's taking exams over there. Second boy, he's settled in Arkansas. So let me tell you, my wife is coming with me to ministry on 20th of Delhi for two weeks. And my son, he's joining me ministry for two weeks from Mumbai, Hyderabad. Uh, this Vilay, Raipur, those areas, then Orissa, ending up uh, Raigada, then Vishakhapatram, then he will, but they are still working as full time, okay? So we have to show our children what we have to do by being a model and example. And we have to jump into the water before them. We have to guide them. Anybody, everybody know a, a small, maybe you all know it, crab, you know crab? Crab one time is just a, a short story. Try to uh, teach his, uh, you know, young ones to walk. How it will be? Huh? It is funny, right? This crab itself walks back. That's the way it is walking, okay? How can he straighten out or teach us his children how to walk straight? It is impossible. I didn't say that you are walking like that, don't it? So if you walk straight, your children, your family, everybody will walk straight. So you have to show them. You have to guide them. That's very essential. If you want your children to be in this path, you have to guide them. You have to be the leader. Praise God. By being a living example in your own family, you can raise up a great generation. Praise God. My son has uh, the gift of prophecy as well. I also live, uh, get so many gifted. Uh, I don't want to expose anything like that. Uh, for, for, I mean, may the God take all the glory. If more than me, my son is very active. If he sees a couple of children like this, he will get them, pray for them. Until these guys will be filled with the Holy Spirit, he don't let them go. Amen. I am also such a guy like that. Uh, same thing, let me tell you how I get uh, filled with the Holy Spirit, okay? We had a fasting prayer going on. First time I am taking baptism right after my, uh, first time I am taking uh, fasting right after my baptism next to the church announced a meeting. I was on my knees. Uh, first, time, first time you guys know when you take baptism, you feel so much hunger, right? So the morning session ended up. Everybody went to the parsonage to get some snacks or drinks, you know, things like that. I was sitting uh, very desperate. Lord, I am here. I uh, prayed four hours. Why I didn't get, uh, uh, you know, filled with the Holy Spirit? There are two brothers stayed right there with me over there without going to the parsonage. They said, uh, my pet, uh, nickname was Sergeant. Okay, he, they really comforted me, tell them. Uh, telling me, don't worry, let's sit in the presence of God. I sit along with them, three persons, not with the church. We prayed together. But I make a condition to God, Lord, 
I will not get up from this knees until and unless I receive the Holy Spirit. Guess what? God showed me so many things and visions. Philippians chapter 3 verse 1. Amen? Within half an hour, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. So such a challenge-taking person I am in my own small childhood. So God will build up all the works according to his purpose and plans in his time. That's what God, our God is. He's an awesome God. We never tasted his power a little bit. That's all. But he is an awesome God. Amen? Amen. Have you seen the lit? Have you seen the bird crow? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. The black one? Yes. Did this crow, did you ever see giving food to the, this young ones? <laughs> she will try to grab somebody else's food too. He never feed the young ones. But my God even feed the young ones who are crying for food. That's what Sam says. Hello? You don't have to worry about it. We are better than those crows and these little birds. In such a way, beautifully, wonderfully, he made us in his own image and likeness for his glory and for his kingdom. Let's be doers, promise-keeping God. He is with us. No matter who stays away from us, God is with us. Hallelujah. Let the mighty name of God be blessed. May the God bless the boundaries of this church so that so many people may come and feel the touch of God and see Jesus Christ personally in their lives. Hallelujah. And receive Holy Spirit. Father, I bless this church, Pastor Roshan Jacob, Sister Annie, and all the ministers who are working here, both in the church and in the ministry and in the outreach ministries as well. Lord, send so many people from this church for the missions as well. We pray all that you may send the labors in your time. We give you all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.